Hi everyone, we've got a brand new album to review today. It's called Five Steps on the Sun by a band called Darwin. That's D-A-R and then it's capital W-I-N. This was released on the 7th of June, that was my birthday, on the Phantom Recordings label. Darwin is a, an artist's name, he's actually called that, and he's uh, a guitarist as part of this group. And then the much-travelled Simon Phillips on drums and percussion is the other half of this duo that go to make up this band. Phillips has been around for quite some time. You might remember him from Toto, Judas Priest. I think he also played with The Who for uh, a short time. Darwin, really, he's pretty well unknown to me. He's Icelandic. He's a, a lead guitarist. On the album, there's some other guys on here. There's... Uh, Lead vocalist is Matt Bissonette. His wife, Cheria Bissonette, she does some beautiful backing harmonies on the album. Greg Howe is on guitars. There's a superb Indian lady bassist called Mohini Day. When you listen to this album, her bass playing is absolutely top-notch, really good indeed. Very impressed with her, I was. The legendary Derek Shinian, he's playing some of the keyboards. He's on the first three tracks and one of them later on. You might remember him from Dream Theatre before Jordan Rudess joined. Julian Pollock plays keys on the other tracks, so he does four through to eight and then he does track ten. I think Derek Sheenian does track nine. Andy Simmons, he plays lead guitar on track eight. And there's Jesse Siebenberg, he's acoustic guitars throughout and also backing vocals. This is a really interesting release and one that I've listened to like three or four times now and I'm very happy to bring to you and I think it's one that you will definitely enjoy because it's in that ilk of what we're looking at particularly in July as we're looking at this new wave of, of progressive bands and music that's coming through we're concentrating on that throughout July so We'll go through each of the tracks. I'll do just a, a, a sort of a mini review at the end of each each of the tracks, uh, talk about each of them, and then I'll give you a, a score towards the end. Okay. And don't forget to leave your comments and thoughts in the section below as we're going through. So the first track is called Soul Police. This is a grand opening. It's got a really funky beat to it. There's multi-layered vocals throughout now you'll find that that's quite a feature on this album they really sound extremely good so the harmonies are absolutely bang on there supporting Mac and Chiara there's a, a, a gorgeous lead solo throughout the whole album the standard of the guitar playing the lead guitar playing in particular is very good I've really enjoyed virtually every track there's a, a, a really nice solo to be listened to this one's no exception. And it's a likeable opening. It sets us off on the right tracks. And i am really got buy-in straight away. I'm enjoying this from the get-go. Now, the next track is called Inside the Zoo. Now, this has got quite a, a, an expansive Robin Trower type guitar sound to it. You, you know, it's difficult to know how to describe it, but if you've heard Robin Trower's uh, guitar, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It, it's got that feel to it. It's, it's a heavy track throughout, and it does have this dream theatre feel to it. Obviously, Derek Sherinian is playing on the keyboards on this one, but it does have that dream theatre feel to it. It's an extremely good track. The vocals, they're about as close to a growl as you get on this album. Now, I'm not a massive fan of growly vocals. You're probably aware of that. But it gets mighty close. Another absolutely super track. The next track is Be That Man. Now, this has got... It's a heavier track again. It's got quite a, a, a grunge metal feel to it. The verse is very much in your face. Quite vicious and vocal in there but the chorus is lighter great keyboards again from Derek who's played some wonderful stuff on this album so far I think this is the last of his his opening three tracks there's a very strong instrumental break in the middle it's, it's just a really very nice album to listen to there's no two ways about it 
The next track is just a, a short palette cleanser and it's called One Step on the Sun. There's a gorgeous piano and lead guitar in there. It's only about a minute or so long. And then this sets the stage for the title track. This is very much the centerpiece of the album for me. It's in the middle, it's track five. There's a gorgeous arpeggio opening to this one. It's just mesmeric. The track is about space travel. It's about recounting your experiences. And that's what really goes to make up this track. Again, the harmonies are spot on. Absolutely lovely all throughout this album, but certainly no more than on this track. Absolutely immaculate. There's a piano edition that's just super, just caressing the, the melody that's going on there. Another great solo in there as well. And some very good and quite amazing tempo changes all throughout. Now, Simon Phillips is, is an extremely good drummer, but you know what? When I was listening to it, he did remind me of Gavin Harrison. I did a Porcupine Tree reaction quite recently. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a, a link for it up here somewhere. On that one, Gavin was absolutely precise and his rhythms were so tight. And this is a track that reminds me similar to that sound that Simon really is trying to portray here. This is a as a centre track, as a title track. It's very good indeed. It's a it's a real highlight on this album. I think it's also fair to say that it does have more than a passing uh, resemblance to the more sort of modern Steve Hackett type sounds that he does. If you think of the last album, that sort of feel to it. it come out. I might feature this as a separate reaction, but if you do get to listen to this track, I think you'll agree with me that it's it's really good. As you can tell, that was uh, probably the highlight for me on the album so far. But really, the next track is one that's called The Sun, and I think this is the, the closing piece of these last three tracks. So we had that short instrumental, we've had the title track, and we've had this one now called The Sun. It closes this run of three tracks, as I say, and it, it's one that, that calms the mood down a little bit after the impetuosity of the previous one. It just calms us down, brings us down, gives us a chance to just take a breath for a, a moment or two. feels really, if the last one is about space travel, it feels as if for this one, you've actually landed on a planet I don't know, it just it gives you that impression. You, you'll you know what I mean when you, when you listen to the track. There's a fretless bass on this one. I know I love a fretless bass, and this one is just superb. It really gives that sort of airy, uh, spacey feel to it that just sets the track off beautifully. Again, the lead guitar, absolutely stunning. The faultless each of the tracks so far has had a, a piece that you can really enjoy and just revel at the, the skills that have been on display. And these, certainly these last two tracks have been monumental. No two ways about it. Imitation Suite is next. Now this is, this is, feels like we're ste stepping back into the 70s here. It's got that appearance of perhaps a, a track that might have been recorded by Free. That sort of feel to it, a proper traditional 70s rock feel to it. There's a Hammond organ in there, and that helps to create that feeling that you've got there. Strong harmonies, again, within there, a feature throughout. And it was really one that, when I first listened to it, you, you sometimes listen to a track and you think, I've heard that somewhere before. No, I don't think I have. But it really felt very familiar to me and one that you you sort of warm to straight away when you listen to any album there's always a track that really sort of uh, stands out and you warm to straight away and for me this was the track imitation suede seasons of life follows quite an unpronounced gentle start to this one that's a couple of the tracks have had this this kind of a start it's a ballad it's a track of reflection considering there is a another strong solo in there but i have to be honest this is probably my least favorite so far i'm not a massive 
ballad fan at the best of times. This didn't really float about. It's okay, but within the standards of what we've heard so far, it's probably the weakest track for me anyway. Hooks and Heroes is an imaginary title track that comes up next. One that's got a dramatic start to, to it. It's all alive and straight in your face right from the get-go. There's a simple first verse to it. It's got quite a really a simple drum, bass, vocals to it. There's no embellishments to it. It's just very much in the raw, those two instruments and the vocals. But that soon expands and develops into quite a monster of a track. There's quite a, a pop feel to it, and I wasn't really expecting that so much from what we've heard from the album so far. And in there, whilst we talk about the, the great solos that they've been throughout, there is quite that beautiful nylon acoustic. And that made such a difference and just gave it a, a different dimension. I, I enjoyed that little section in there, no end. And boy, we're on to the last track straight away. What Do We Know is the title of this finale. As with all albums, it's a big uplifting finish to it on this one. There's very much a call to action feel about it, although I'm not quite sure what the actual call or the action is. The verses appear to be asking us questions. The chorus is giving us a simple repetition of the title. What do we know? What do we know? And that gets repeated as the chorus throughout. Some lovely female vocals that go over the top of the harmonies here. A very nice alternative to that harmonised sound and probably could have been used a little bit more throughout the album. And it ends with quite a tribal drum feel to it. And once again, a little bit unexpected, but it's a strong finish for what is, for me, a really strong album. So what do I think? There's a few points that that really stand out to me. First of all, the album, it's a good length to listen to. It's 45 minutes, there or thereabouts. For me, that's that's always a good length to listen to. I don't really think it's challenging so there's there are some pieces where you're trying to gain hidden meanings and understandings from it it's a plain simple listen to but i don't mean that in a derogatory manner in many ways that sometimes is more appealing than having something that's really thought-provoking but it's it's very listenable too it quickly becomes quite familiar and really quite catchy and by the time I'd sort of played this a couple of times you know the songs quickly get in your your mind and you know what's coming up and that's always a good sign. The vocals tended to be heavily layerized and harmonized. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I didn't find it detracted from the album. It was just noticeable for me. See what you think about that and let me know in the comments. Simon Phillips is a drummer extremely good very accomplished and really the musicianship throughout was very strong something that was able to to latch on to and, and really enjoy some good people on this album make no mistake i felt the use of the guitar solos virtually on every track were really relevant and necessary and very enjoyable they tried to make them as as varied as possible rather than just the same type of lead coming in Uh, and once again that was noticeable the bass deserves a really special mention for me i've uh, highlighted it a couple of times on the run through for me it may well have been the strongest part on the album mohini day is a supremely accomplished musician so the standouts for me quite a simple one really the title track and the one that followed the sun. The week one, once again, you probably already know, it was that ballad, it was Seasons of a Life. I could probably skip that one, uh, if truth be told. So my verdict, very enjoyable. The bass was strong and punchy and in your face. The tracks were very easy on the ear. Now, when I tend to score these things, a, a 7 out of 10 would be would be the sort of usual baseline. So above is better, below is not as good. I think this one is an eight, eight and a half out of 10. And I think it's really 
well worth adding to your collection. I've got a feeling that you will enjoy it as much as I have. And if you if you do get hold of a copy and have a listen to it, let me know in the comments what you thought about it as well, because I really, really enjoyed it. Darwin, Five Steps on the Sun. That's my album review. There's another album review on screen now. It's one that I know you're going to enjoy as well. This is one that I did quite recently from a Swedish band this time. I think they're Swedish. And it's up on screen now. <laughs> 